Have you been hearing reports about artificial intelligence? My name is Michael Chandler, pastor of the Victor Valley Bible Church in Victorville, California, and I'd like to welcome you to this Bible Under Day broadcast on the subject of how artificially intelligent pastors are not for smart Christians. It appears that the sci-fi we grew up watching for entertainment has now become real life in the 21st century. We used to marvel at how Scotty could speak to his computer and how an android could act like a human being, though without human emotion. Back in the 1980s, I drove for an airport shuttle service transporting passengers to and from Los Angeles International Airport. And back then, the talk was about how our reliable Thomas guides would be replaced by a global positioning system that would show the most efficient route by us merely entering an address into the device. I've marveled to watch a human-like robot walk on stage, lift a trumpet to its lips, and play music. Toyota has also designed a five-feet-tall violin-playing automaton complete with flexible joints and mechanical fingers. All of these testify to the image of God inherent in the human creature. The Creator endued creative capacity in the crown of His creation. Man imagines, man invents, man designs, and man develops. Though he created everything out of nothing, as the scripture says in Hebrews 11, verse 3, the things uh, which are seen are, uh, were made not of things which are visible. Man, nonetheless, makes things out of the raw materials God entrusted to us for our benefit. Necessity, we are told, is the mother of invention. But just think of the many things we need that are now provided by the divinely created intelligence of human innovation. Space exploration labs have yielded everyday blessings for the common man. Everything from dust busters, tires, wireless headsets, smoke detectors, freeze-dried foods, camera phones, and even shock-absorbent athlete, athletic shoes trace their origins to NASA engineers. The number one military invention that we use every day, the Internet, has absolutely, dramatically changed our lives. And thanks to tenacious military genius dating back to World War II, microwave ovens are common kitchen conveniences. Among, among many other things, we use duct tape, uh, cargo pants, super glue, canned food, the slinky, and yes, even silly putty all due to our nation's determination to win at war. We are grateful for all of these things, no doubt. But along with such advances comes the fear of both consumer and those who are in the manufacturing world, the fear of being left behind, the fear of feeling legitimately, truly unneeded, or even being replaced. Well, now it appears that artificial intelligence has sent its resume to pulpit supply and pastoral search committees. Writing for the Associated Press, Kristen Graceheber, on June 10, 2023, reported how several hundred Protestants packed St. Paul's Church in the Bavarian town of Furth and were led in worship by a machine. The chat GBT chatbot, personified by an avatar of a bearded black man on a huge screen above the altar, then began preaching and said, Dear friends, it is an honor for me to stand here and preach to you as the first artificial intelligence at this year's convention of Protestants in Germany. So the avatar said with an expressionless face and monotonous voice. Perhaps it went more like this. Dear friends, it is an honor for me to stand here and preach to you as the first artificial intelligence at this year's convention of Protestants in Germany. I mean, what a sleeper, huh? Well, 
Though conceived by Jonas Simmerlein, a theologian and philosopher from the University of Vienna, not only was the sermon delivered artificially, but about 98% of the entire service was planned out, prepared, and delivered by a machine. And surprised by the success of his experiment, Simmerlein, Simmerlein boasted, quote, you end up with a pretty solid church service, end quote. Well, nonetheless, let me just suggest, at least for your musings, that biblically-minded Christians will never settle for an artificially intelligent pastor. For they know that preaching is the work of a spirit-filled man of God, not a pre-programmed machine of man. Twice the phrase man of God is used in the New Testament, both times by the Apostle Paul and both times in reference to his young protege, Timothy. In 1 Timothy 6 and verse 11, we read, Paul writing to his son of the faith, But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. In 2 Timothy 3 and verses 16 through 17, Paul says, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God, such as you, Timothy, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then we have these chilling words in 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning with, And I charge you, therefore, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead by his appearing and by his kingdom, preach the word. Men of God are preachers of the things of God. Pastors are, by job description, preachers. They are pastors. They are shepherds of God's people. Artificial intelligence may, as they say, free up a minister's, quote, Time for individual spiritual guidance of their parishioners. End quote. That's all good. We want to and ought to make time for individual spiritual guidance of our parishioners. Yes, obviously. But pastors are still expected to fulfill all facets of ministry. Not just counseling, but public proclamation. As Paul uh, explained to the Ephesian elders in Acts chapter 20 and verse 20, quote, serving the Lord by proclaiming repentance and faith toward God publicly and from house to house. Spiritual leadership calls for pastors to be, as he says in 1 Thessalonians, among their people. Listen as he writes to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5, saying, um, Beginning in verse 5, our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7, he says, We were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. In chapter 2 verse 10, He says, you are witnesses, and also God, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly behaved ourselves among you who believe, as you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father does his own children, that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, And verses 12 through 13, he urged the Thessalonians to so regard, recognize their leaders among them, saying, uh, recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. The Apostle Peter also had this same idea in mind when he wrote to the churches uh, in his first letter. 1 Timothy chapter 5, and uh, beginning in verse 1, the elders, he says, 
who are among you, I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, among you, among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Ministers live, as we say, in the fish tank, so those who hear their expositions can see their example. The Apostle Paul, again quoting from Paul in this connection, writes just as much in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9, saying, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. You see, we know that the man behind the pulpit must therefore be the same man they see, the congregation sees, the members of his church see in the workaday world of life as it is. He must do the work of an evangelist, 2 Timothy 4, 5, and cannot uh, afford the luxury of even an artificial assistant pastor. Already ready-made sermons are availed ministers who fail to take time to meditate in preparing their own messages, availed not for hard-working, diligent men of God, but for those who want the easy route and find someone else's words to preach instead of their own. It takes me, for example, about 12 hours to prepare one one-hour sermon, several hours for these Bible on our days and other Bible studies during the week, plus the other uh, aspects of ministry that I delight to share in, plus working in the so-called secular world, teaching music at a local charter school. These are all expected of a man of God, of a pastor. And uh, smart Christians will not long tolerate a minister whose work is manufactured by a machine. They rightfully, and let me say again, they rightfully demand a sermon generated from the heart of a man who studies the Bible and lives it out before them. That's why they give him a salary to show him, to show them, rather, how to live out the scriptures in their lives. And they expect him, and rightfully expect him, to prepare sermons worth listening to from his own mind and heart. Christians also know that their religion is for talkers. John the Baptist came preaching, it says in Matthew 3 and verse 1, as did Jesus, Mark 1 and verse 14, as did the apostles, Luke 9 and verse 2 and Acts chapter 10 and verse 42. So did the early Christians, Acts 11, 19 through 20. The Christian religion is for people who want to talk about it, not expect a machine to do the talking for them. The Lord promised, didn't he? that he will confess before his Father in heaven those who confess him before men on earth. Acts, or Matthew 10, 32 through 33. And there is nothing, certainly artificial, about confessing our faith. Smart Christians will never replace their pastors with artificial intelligence. Some of its features may be useful, but their beloved minister minds the mind of the Lord, so he can convey the word of the Lord to God's people. Let me encourage you, as I mentioned earlier, to hide away in your heart 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Not an uncommon passage for us to hearken to during these Bible on our days. Again, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says, perhaps you know it with me, can recite it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Again, my name is Michael Chandler, pastor of the Victor Valley Bible Church, where I worship with our congregation delightfully every Sunday morning at 1015, meeting at 16439 Hughes Road in Victorville, at which time also our services are live-streamed on Facebook. For more information, please visit our website located at www.victorvalleybiblechurch.org. Or, for more information, 
please feel uh, free to, to write. My email address, I'd love to hear from you, is bibletrom at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you as you intelligently live out your Bible in these days.